Hi, I'm Jared Fall, and today we're gonna to teach you exactly how we mic all of our cymbals, the hi-hat, and the ride cymbal. And so I brought in the drumlessons.com sound engineer, Victor Godera, to help out with uh, showing us exactly how he gets these amazing sounds. And then before you start, I wanna say, having a good bass or having good cymbals to start with is gonna give you a really, really, really nice cymbal sound. So I absolutely love absolutely. these cymbals. These cymbals. Yeah. But the overheads, I'm assuming, are for more than just that. They're also to capture some of the room Definitely. sound of the drums. So Definitely. why don't you just take it away and start with you know, telling us what we're using up here as far as the overheads go and what other options do they have as price-wise, budget-wise, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what we use are, uh, again, Sure brand SM94s on the overheads. Uh, they're kind of middle of the road price-wise and uh, the, the sound reproduction that you get from them. They, they get what we want for a decent price. Yeah, because I find you can spend a lot of money on, on overheads. overheads. You could easily spend $2,000 on one microphone, yeah. and which I've used $2,000 microphones on the overheads as well. And, uh, but it, you know, it doesn't really take a very expensive mic to get what you want. And uh, these 94s, I believe, are somewhere around $300, $250 or so. Mm -hmm. so. Each? Yeah, it, a, a piece, yeah. And what other options do they have? If someone has a budget of 75 bucks and they wanna uh, do overhead mics, can they use like an SM57? Do they have to use, like what's the difference between um, right. these mics and a, a 57 or like the mics that we're using on the toms? So what we're using here are condensers as the overheads. They're more sensitive, generally a little bit more expensive, um, and they create, they reproduce the high end a lot better. So it works really well for an overall representation of the kit, cymbals, uh, the kit, the room, even get a little bit more ambience in, in, the, uh, in the overhead microphones. Um, you could uh, just throw up a SM57 or two, a pair of them as overheads. It'd be $100 and you could get the job done and you just EQ and process them just according to try to get that high end back. Mm -hmm. But again, we've, we've spent uh, kind of middle of the road and gotten these microphones and I just love the sound that they produce. So what other options do they have budget-wise? Like right. these are on 250 bucks each. What can they get for 50? Yeah, you know, I would recommend probably secondary as for as a, a lower end choice would be Apex brand. Uh, they got some great small diaphragm pencil condensers that are just awesome for the price and the sound that they pr reproduce. So. Cool. so with that said, can you just tell us a little bit about the positioning of these, yeah. the distance away from the cymbals, the position and the distance away from the cymbals, that'd be best. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the fact that we're using two microphones as, as the overall representation of the kit. Generally, when we're make, creating a mix or even a live mix, uh, we mix to two speakers, left and right. So that's what we're representing by the two microphones, left mm -hmm. and a right. Um, and they actually, when they're panned uh, in the mix, they're panned hard left and hard right. So you get this really nice wide image of the kit mm -hmm. and the overall you know, the shells, you can kind of hear the toms pan left to right. So now I'll talk about the distance. Uh, what I generally like to do is about an arm's length away from the cymbal. Mm -hmm. And I like to have them at as close a, as an even height away from the kit as I can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you find that a drummer or yourself uh, will have this, a certain amount of cymbals raised up quite a bit. And then you may want to compensate the one microphone just a little bit to go higher, but generally you want to have them equidistant. And some guys, uh, there could be some great comments going on here, will swear by the fact that you've got to equally measure out the overheads away from the snare drum. If that works for you and you want to do that, go for it. Like the middle? The middle of the snare drum and you would measure from each of the microphones out. Yeah, it's important to, to tell people in all these videos that we film that these are our techniques and what we exactly. use. They're not there's not a, a Bible of how to make the drums so that you have to follow 100% or anything right. like that. Uh, so it's just our ideas. If they work for you, great. If not, you know, make up your own and, and mm -hmm. let us know exactly what's working for you. So mm -hmm. that's a really good idea. Um, one yeah. thing I wanted to mention here is because I just got uh, this new symbol, mm -hmm. Piesty Alpha, and I've actually yep. almost created another level of symbols. Yep. Now, would you change anything based on this? For me, no, I wouldn't, and you can see that I haven't. Um, I've done that on purpose because that is that specifically is a little bit of an effect symbol. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be used that much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not going to go to it and, and crash on it all the time. Sounds pretty good, though. So I hit it up quite a bit. It, it does. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I haven't heard that. That's yeah. a brand new symbol. I haven't heard that. So after after you play around, I may make a small adjustment. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to move stuff after you start playing and hearing what the mix actually sounds like. 
Cool. So then as far as like distance apart from each other, this is based right. on the kit or? Yeah, so while well, distance both apart and uh, in this direction, yeah. I basically try to um, take the toms and the snare and put the microphones in this depth in the center of that. Okay. So right now, if the kit is about you know, this wide, yeah. I have the, the overheads in the middle of that. Yeah, if the kit is a four, four foot wide across, exactly. you put it at the two foot exactly. mark right in between. Exactly. Okay. And then spacing uh, width, I like to have it pretty much just inside of the outside of uh, the symbols. Okay. So if the outside of the symbols is just in a little bit, mm -hmm. and then so like a foot, almost like a foot in on either side exactly. of the drum set. Cool. Yeah. Cool, so now can you tell us a little bit about how you mic the hi-hat and what type of mic you use there? Right, so we use um, AKG C430s on both the hi-hat and the ride and mm -hmm. the auxiliary hat that you have. Okay. Uh, normally, um, I like to just bring the microphone in, have it above the hats and point it down like so. Away from everything else. There's Away no from point. everything else again, exactly. Um, but for aesthetics and, and the way that we have our cameras set up, we just put the microphone underneath. And I find that the sound isn't too different from up here. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was my thing. I know when I first started working with Victor, he put it on, on top of the height. I'm like, no, because I, I like just like super clean look as yeah. possible. Um, but so he, he compromised and then put it underneath. And I think it sounds all right, but. Yeah, and, and generally, even in the mix that we have running, the hi-hat microphone is mixed in not too much anyway. So it's, it's very lowly mixed in, so. So yeah, normally so, you'd have this one just on an angle pointing a, a little bit away. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to place it in here underneath. Okay. Okay. So it's almost a mirror image of where it would be on the top, but it's on the bottom. And then pointing away. Just a slightly, yeah. Cool. And now what, what would you do on uh, the ride symbol over here? Now I know you said you like to capture, because I have an auxiliary hi-hat yeah. setup, so you like to try and capture the ride and the hi-hats with yeah. one microphone. So first of all, I don't always uh, throw a microphone on the ride, but that is, uh, it's a characteristic thing. I just seem to like it over the years, and mm -hmm. uh, I really like your symbols. So I'd like it generally to have another close mic on the ride so that I can accent it just a little bit more in the mix. So I'm gonna grab it here. Okay, so what I've done with the ride mic now, um, because Jared has a unique setup, he's got an auxiliary set of hi-hats, um, I'm not gonna throw up a, a yet another microphone on the hats as well as the ride. I'm just gonna take that same ride microphone and just put it in between. This is totally unique to Jared's setup, mm -hmm. so um, that's just a choice that I made. I don't feel that I need another microphone to accent it, mm -hmm. and I can get them both in there, and I'm pretty happy with it. Cool, well thanks for uh, yeah. sharing these tips with us, man. This mm -hmm. is like, Huge, and I learned some things that I didn't know as far as positioning and where it should go as far as being in the center of the drum set. So some great tips for you guys. And I hope you guys can try them out next time you're at a live gig or you're in the studio. Um, always remember just to work really, really uh, good with the sound engineer. Don't, mm -hmm. don't tick them off. You don't wanna like tell them how to position their mics because mm -hmm. everyone does things a little bit differently, but you know, have fun with it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.